So in this video, I'll discuss some concepts that support the idea that particles can also have a wave nature. Okay, so in established ko kasi last time yung particle nature ng light. So light is a wave, pero meron siyang mga properties like yung ability niya na mag-collide sa mga electrons para ma-expel niya yung mga electrons through the photoelectric effect. Meron din siyang particular discreteness na na-observe sa black body radiation. Kaya na-derive ni Planck yung kanyang Planck distribution function. Okay, so dito naman, i-describe natin yung uh, particles in terms of the so-called wavelength and frequency. So ano kaya yung wavelength at yung frequency kapag ka particles na yung pinag-uusapan? So, Louis de Broglie suggested that if light behaves like a particle at certain conditions, matter could also behave like waves. Okay? So, we can express this through the de Broglie relation. So, ang tawag dito ay de Broglie relation. So, the Planck's constant is equal to the de Broglie wavelength, which is the wavelength of your particle times the particle's momentum. Okay? So, lambda is the de Broglie wavelength, P is the momentum, and H is the Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules second. So, alam natin na yung formula ng momentum is P is equal to the mass times the velocity of the particle. Okay? So, pwede natin lagyan ng vector yung ating P para mas uh, accurate. So, that is for the De Broglie relation. So, ano yung features ng De Broglie relation? So, for the first feature, the momentum of such particles have to be very small to have an observable De Broglie wavelength. So, para ma-observe natin yung wavelength ng isang particle, kailangan meron siyang sobrang baba na value for the momentum. So, yung mga ganitong um, objects, yung mga ganitong momentum lang, yung mga objects na sobrang mababa ang kanilang mass, like electrons. Okay? So, kapag ka malalaking uh, objects, like yung mga normal objects natin na nakikita natin everyday, hindi natin masyadong na-observe yung kanilang De Broglie wavelength. Okay? Because uh, they would have very low De Broglie wavelengths. So low that we cannot observe. So, ang observable lang sa atin ay yung wavelengths up to the 10 to the negative 12 meters or 1 picometer. So, this is the picometer. Okay? So, yung picometer kasi yan na yung mga atomic distances. So, less than that, mahirap na siyang i-observe or wala na tayong equipment para mag-observe ng mga ganong wavelengths. Okay? So, the second one is that such momentum values, so yung mga ganitong values ng momentum, can only be obtained if, number one, or letter I, a heavy object is moving very slowly. So kapag ka yung isang malaking object nyo ay nagmo-move near zero yung kanyang velocity, yun, pwede nating ma-observe yung kanyang uh, De Broglie wavelength. Pwede rin naman na, pwede siyang mabilis yung object natin, pero sobrang baba na kanyang mass, like an electron. So uh, electrons are very light. Yung mga electrons ay 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Yan yung mass nila. Pero they are moving very fast. Okay? So, na-observe natin yung kanilang De Broglie wavelength. Okay? So, electrons can have an observable value of the wavelength. Okay? So, as an example, so gagamitin natin itong um, concept ni De Broglie. We will calculate the De Broglie wavelength of an electron with an energy of 1.25 electron volts. So, kinetic energy to. So, pwede natin gamitin yung ating 1 half mv squared. Okay? So, calculate the momentum of the electron. So, aside from 1 half mv squared, pwede natin gamitin yung p squared over 2f para directly makalculate na natin yung momentum. So, deriving the momentum, we have p is equal to the square root of 2 times the mass of the electron times its kinetic energy. So, i-convert muna natin yung kinetic energy to joules kasi ang given ay electron volts. So, makikita natin dito sa substitution na ito na yung conversion ng ating kinetic energy. So, 1.25 electron volts times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volts. So, makakancel na yung electron volts dyan. So, yung multiply natin ang mass ng electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms times 2. Tapos, kukunin natin yung square root. So, makukuha natin yung momentum ng ating particle or electron which is 6.04 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram meters per second. So, after natin makuha yon, we will get the De Broglie wavelength using the De Broglie relation. So, ito yung ating De Broglie relation. Derive lang natin yung equation to get the De Broglie wavelength. So, lambda is equal to H over P. So, given na yung ating momentum, 6.04 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram meter per second. The Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. Divide nyo yung Planck's constant dun sa momentum. Makukuha nyo yung De Broglie wavelength which is 1.097 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. 
So, kung i-convert nyo to sa nanometers, you'll get 1.097 nanometers. So, as far as we know, this is observable. Kasi this is uh, far greater than the 10 to the negative 12 meters or the picometer range. Okay? So, again, the Planck's constant is uh, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second. Yan yung Planck's constant na gagamitin nyo dito sa equation. Okay? So, here we have a sample problem. So, i-apply lang natin yung De Broglie relation sa isang electron na na-eject through the photoelectric effect. Okay? So, calculate the De Broglie wavelength of the ejected electron after a metal alloy with phi equals 2.25 electron volts, that's the work function of this metal, was irradiated with a 300 nanometer light. So, yung ating light ay may wavelength na 300 nanometers. So, the first thing to do is to calculate the energy of the incident light. So, using this equation, E is equal to HC over lambda, Okay, makakalculate natin yung energy. So, substituting the values, we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second for the Planck's constant, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light, and 300 times 10 to the negative 9 meters for the wavelength of the incident radiation. So, nilagay ko na yung times 10 to the negative 9 para makonvert na siya directly to meters from the nanometer. Okay? So, calculating this, we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 19 Joules. So, i-convert lang natin siya sa electron volts using this um, conversion factor. 1 electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 Joules. So, i-apply natin itong conversion na to dito. Makukuha natin yung energy ng incident radiation which is 4.136 electron volts. Next, i-calculate natin yung kinetic energy ng ejected electron using the photoelectric effect equation. So, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron is equal to the energy of the incident radiation minus the work function of your metal. So, kapag sinolve natin yan, i-minus natin yung um, 2.25 from 4.136. So, makukuha natin ay 1.886 electron volts. So, that's a kinetic energy. So, after nun, calculate the momentum of the particle from the kinetic energy. So, E sub K, or the kinetic energy is P squared over 2M. So, again, derive natin yung momentum. That's the square root of 2 times the mass of the electron times its kinetic energy. Okay? So, i-convert natin yung 1.886 electron volts to joules. So, ito yung ginawa ko. Minultiply ko siya ng 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volts. So, makakancel ulit yung electron volts. So, after nyan, i-multiply natin siya sa 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And then times 2, tapos kunin natin yung square root. So, makukuha natin yung momentum, 5.403 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram meter per second. So, pag nakuha na natin yung momentum, pwede na natin makalculate yung De Broglie wavelength. So, using this formula, the De Broglie wavelength is equal to the Planck's constant over the momentum of your particle. So, substituting the values, we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second for H, and then we have the momentum, 5.403 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram meter per second, we will get 1.226 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Okay? Convert lang natin siya sa nanometers using this uh, conversion. So, 1 meter is equal to 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers. So, gamitin natin yung conversion para makonvert natin yung meters to nanometers. Makukuha natin yung De Broglie wavelength which is 1.226 nanometers. So, this is my discussion on the De Broglie uh, relation. So, next video natin, i-describe na natin yung um, electron as a wave. So, paano nila na-apply yung wave nature ng electrons sa buong um, atomic structure or electronic structure. Okay? So, see you next video.